Chapter fifty two of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Inferno twenty five. The Eighth Circle. Fraud the seventh trench thief the thief at the conclusion of his words lifted his hands with both their figs and cried take that o god for tis to thee i show them from that time onward snakes have been my friends for thereupon one coiled around his neck as if to say i'd have thee speak no more another coiling tied his arms together and clinched itself so well in front of him that he could make no use of them at all pistoia ah pistoia why not will to burn to ashes and no longer last since in ill-doing thou excellest thy seed in all of hell's dark rings i have seen no spirit so arrogant toward god not even he who fell down headlong from the walls of thebes without another word he fled away whereat i saw a centaur full of rage come crying where where is the stubborn soul not even marema lie not even marema has so many snakes i think as on his crupper that one had as far as where our human form begins upon his shoulders right beneath his nape there crouched a dragon with wide opened wings and he sets fire to whomsoever he meets my teacher said he yonder Carcass is, who neath the rocks that form Mount Aventine, oft made a lake of blood. He travels not along the road, or which his brethren go, because of having fraudulently robbed the famous herd which he as neighbour had. This ended his sly deeds beneath the club of Hercules, who may, perhaps, have dealt him a hundred blows whereof he felt but ten while thus he spoke that sinner too made up whereat three spirits came and stood below us whom neither i nor even my leader noticed until they all cried out who then are ye because of which our conversation ceased for afterward we heeded them alone i knew them not but so it happened them as it is wont to do in certain cases that one perforce employed another's name saying but where can chianfa have remained hence that my leader might give heed i placed my finger in a line from chin to nose if thou art slow now reader to believe what i shall tell no marvel will it be for i who saw it hardly grant i did as toward them i was holding up my brows lo a six-footed serpent hurls itself in front of one and clings to him all over with both its middle feet it clasped his paunch and with its forefeet seized upon his arms then with its teeth it wounded both his cheeks it spread its hind feet out along his thighs and thrusting next its tail between the two it stretched it upward all along his back ivy was never rooted to a tree so fast as round about the other's limbs that horrible wild creature twined its own and thereupon as if 
hot wax they were, they stuck together, and their colours mixed, till neither seemed to be what it had been. Just as a brownish hue precedes the flame on burning paper which is not yet black, while equally the white part dies away. The other two looked on, and each exclaimed, Oh, me, Agnello, what a change is thine! For see, thou now art neither two nor one. Already into one had both heads turned, when we two countenances still beheld, mixed in a single face where both were lost. From the four previous strips two arms were made, the thighs and legs, the belly and the chest, became such members as were never seen. Cancelled therein was every former aspect. The transformed figure seemed both two and none, and thus appearing, slowly moved away. As like a lightning flash a lizard looks, if changing hedges neath the dog-day scourge across a road it passes, even such a little fiery serpent seemed to me, as toward the bellies of the other two it came, livid and black as peppercorn, and in that part through which our nourishment is first received, it transfixed one of them, and then fell down, stretched out in front of him. The pierced man gazed at it, but nothing said. Nay, Firmly on his feet he stood and yawned, as if attacked by fever or by sleep. He at the serpent looked, and it at him, one through his wound, the other through its mouth, smoked hard, and each smoke with the other mingled. Let Lucan then be silent, where he tells of poor Sabalus and Nasidius' fate, and, giving heed, hear what is now proclaimed. Of Cadmus and of Arethusa too, let Ovid cease to speak, for though his verse turn him into a snake and make of her a fount, I grudge him not, for face to face he ne'er so changed two natures that the forms of each were ready to exchange their matter. They blended each with each in such a way that while the serpent forkwise clove its tail, the wounded man together drew his feet. The legs, and with them even the very thighs, so stuck together that in little time the juncture left no mark that could be seen. The cloven tail was taking on the shape which there was being lost. The skin of one, meanwhile, was growing soft and hard the others. I saw his arms withdraw into his armpits, and both the serpent's feet, which were not long, lengthen as much as those were growing short and then its hinder feet, together twisted, became the member which a man conceals, while from his own the wretch had two thrust forth. And while the smoke was veiling both of them with novel hues and generated hair on one side, and, deprived of it, the other, the one stood up and down, the other fell, nor turned aside, for that the impious eyes beneath which each of them was changing face. The one who stood drew his in toward his temples, and from the excessive matter coming there, ears issued on his undeveloped cheeks, and that which ran not back but was retained of this superfluous matter gave the face a nose, and thickened suitably its lips. He who was lying down 
thrust forth his muzzle, and backward through his head withdraws his ears, even as a snail doth with its horns. His tongue, which single used to be, and prompt to speech, divides itself, while in the other case the split one closes, and the smoking stops. The soul, which had become a savage beast, flees hissing through the trench. The other spits behind him as he talks. Then, having turned away from him his just-created shoulders, he, to the third, said, I'd have Briscoe run as I have on his belly o'er this path. I thus beheld the seventh ballast change and interchange. Here let its novelty excuse me, if it slightly blur my pen. And though somewhat bewildered were my eyes, and though confused my minds, these men could not escape so secretly that I should fail, put you, she Cato perfectly to see, and of the three companions who came first, he only was not changed. The other one was he for whom, Gaville, thou dost weep. Inferno 26 The Eighth Circle Fraud The Eighth Trench fraudulent counsellors. Rejoice, O Florence, since thou art so great, that thou dost bear thy wings o'er sea and land, while even through hell thy name is spread abroad. Among the Thebes five such as these I found thy citizens, whence shame accrues to me, nor to great honour risest thou thereby. But if the truth be dreamed at dawn's approach, Thou feel a little while from now What Prato, of others not to speak, Is craving for thee. And were it now, it would not be too soon. So were it then, since thus it needs must be, For it will grieve me more, the more I age. We went away and up the flight of stairs the bonds had formed for our descent before my teacher climbed again and drew me with him and as we followed up the lonely path among the rocks and borders of the crag our feet proceeded not without our hands i sorrowed then and now again i sorrow when i direct my mind to what i saw and curb my genius more than I am wont, lest it should run when virtue guides it not, that if a kindly star, or aught that's better have blessed me, I myself may not regret it. As many glow-worms, as the countryman, who on the hillside takes his rest, when he who lights the world least hides his face from us, while to the gnat the fly is giving way, sees down along the valley where perchance he gathers in his grapes or ploughs his field, with just as many flames the whole eight trench was gleaming bright as I perceived at once when I was where its bottom came in view. As he who by the bears avenged himself, beheld Elijah's chariot when it left, and when to heaven its horses rose erect, since he could not so trace it with his eyes as to see more than just the flame alone, when, like a little cloud, it rose on high. Of such a nature were the flames that moved along the gully of the ditch, for none displays its theft, though each a sinner hides. Risen up to look, I so stood on the bridge, that without being pushed I would have fallen, had I not grasped a great projecting rock. 
my leader who perceived me thus intent then said the spirits are within the fires and each is swathed by that wherewith he burns my teacher i replied i'm more assured through hearing thee but deemed it so already and wished to ask thee who is in the flames which comes along so cloven at the top that from the pyre it seems to rise whereon eteocles was with his brother place he answered me therein are both ulysses and diomed tormented who in pain thus go together as they did in wrath and in that flame of theirs they now bewail the ambush of the horse which made the gate from which the romans noble seed went forth there they lament the trick because of which deidamia dead still mourns achilles there the palladium's penalty is paid if they can speak within those sparks said i i pray thee teacher much and pray again that mine be worth to thee a thousand prayers refuse not my request to linger here until the horned flame come this way thou seest that toward it i am inclined by great desire and he replied to me thy prayer deserves much praise and therefore i accede to it but see thou that thy tongue restrain itself leave speech to me who have a clear idea of what thou wouldst for they since greeks they were might be perchance disdainful of thy words after the flame had come so near to us that time and place seemed fitting to my leader twas in this fashion that i heard him speak o oh, ye that in a single flame are two if i deserved of you when still alive if i deserved of you or much or little when in the world i wrote the lofty verses depart not but let one of you inform us whither when lost he went away to die the greater born them of the ancient flame began to quiver with a murmuring sound as would a flame made weary by the wind and then while swaying here and there its tip as if the latter were the tongue that spoke gave forth a voice and said when i departed from circe who concealed me near gaeta more than a year before aeneas so had named the place nor fondness for my son nor pious reverence for my aged father nor even the bounden love which should have cheered penelope could overcome within me the eagerness i had to gain experience both of the world and of the vice and worth of men but forth i put upon the deep and open sea with but a single ship and with that little company by whom i had not been deserted both the shores i then beheld as far away as spain morocco and the island of the sards and all the rest that sea bathes round about both hold and slow were i and my companions when we attained that narrow passageway where hercules set up those signs of his which warned men not to sail beyond their bounds seville i left behind me on the right hand caeta had left already on the other and then i said o oh, brothers ye who now have through a hundred thousand perils reached the west to this so short a waking time still left your senses will not to refuse experience of that world behind the sun which knows not man bethink you of the seed whence ye have sprung for ye were not created to lead the life of stupid animals but manliness and knowledge to pursue so eager for the voyage did i make my fellows by this little speech of mine that after it 
I hardly could have checked them. Hence to the morning, having turned our stern, we with our oars made wings for our mad flight, ere veering toward the left as on we sped. Night was already seeing all the stars of the other pole, and our pole so low down that from the ocean's floor it never rose five times rekindled and as often quenched had been the light beneath the moon since first we entered on the passage of the deep when lo a mountain loomed before us dim by reason of the distance and so high it seemed to me that i had seen none such and we rejoiced but soon our happiness was turned to grief for from the new-found land a whirlwind rose and smote our vessel's prow three times it made her whirl with all the waters then at the fourth it made her stern go up and prow go down even as another pleased till over us the ocean's waves had closed inferno twenty seven the eighth circle fraud the eighth trench fraudulent counsellors the flame because of having ceased to speak was quiet and erect and now away from us was going with the gentle poet's leave when lo another which behind it came caused us to turn our eyes up toward its tip by reason of a vague sound issuing thence as the Sicilian bull, which bellowed first with the lament of him, and that was right, who, with his file, had given form to it, was wont to bellow with the voice of him who suffered in it, so that though of brass it seemed the one who by the pain was pierced, even so, since from the body of the flame they had nor part nor mouth the painful words were changed at first into the latter's tongue but when these words had travelled to the tip and given it that vibration which the tongue when uttered gave to them we heard it say o thou to whom i now address my voice and who just now didst talk in lombard saying now go thy way for thee i urge no more though i perhaps of somewhat late arrived be not displeased to stop and speak with me thou seest that i am not although i burn if into this blind world thou only now art fallen down from that sweet latin land whence all my guilt i bring pray tell me whether the romagnoles are having peace or war for i came from the mountains tween abino and that high peak from which the tiber springs while downward i was leaning still intent my leader touched me on my side and said speak thou for this one an italian is and i who had my answer all prepared began to speak without delay o soul that art concealed down yonder thy romagna is not at present and she never was devoid of war within her tyrant's hearts but i left none apparent there just now ravenna is as she for many years has been polenta's eagle so broods there that servia it o'er covers with its wings the town which made the long resistance once and of the french a sanguinary heap beneath the green paws finds itself again Veruccio's former mastiff and the new who foully with montagna dealt their make where they are wont a gimlet of their teeth the cities of la Mone and santano the little lion of the white lair rules who changes sides from summer time to winter and that whose flank is by the savio bathed lives as it sits 
twixt plain and mount, a free state half and half a tyranny. And now I pray thee tell me who thou art, nor harder be than others here have been, so may thy name maintain itself on earth. After the flame had roared a little while, as is its fashion, to and fro it moved its pointed tip, and then gave forth this breath. If I believe that my reply were made to one who to the world would e'er return, this flame would stay without another quiver. But inasmuch as, if I hear the truth, none e'er returned alive from this abyss, fearless of infamy, I answer thee, a man of arms I was, then Cordelia, trusting, since girded thus, to make amends, and certainly my trust had been confirmed, were it not for that high priest whom ill befall, who set me at my former sins again, both how and why I'd had thee hear from me. While I was still the shape of bones and flesh my mother gave me, my performances were not a lion's, but a fox's deed. All covert practices and hidden ways I knew, and I so carried on their arts, that to the ends of earth their fame was noised. When I perceived at last that I had reached that period of my life, when each should strike his sails and coil his ropes. What hitherto had given me pleasure, I thereat disliked. I yielded them, repenting and confessing, and that, alas, poor me would have availed. The prince of modern Pharisees, who then hard by the Lateran had a war on hand, though not with either Saracens or Jews, for Christians were all enemies of his, and none of them had gone to conquer Acre or been a merchant in the Soldan's land. Not heeding in himself his lofty office and holy orders, or in me the cord which Lena used to make those girt therewith, but as upon Soracti Constantine once bade Sylvester heal his leprosy. So this one called on me as Master Leech to cure him of the fever of his pride. He asked me for advice, but I kept still, because his words were like a drunkard's words. And then he said, Let not thy heart mistrust, I from now on absolve thee, teach me then how I can Palestrina overthrow. To lock and unlock heaven is in my power, as thou dost know. Two, therefore, are the keys my predecessor held in small esteem. His weighty words then drove me to the point at which the silent course appeared the worst. Father, I therefore said, since from the sin thou washest me, which I must now commit, a promise long drawn out but shortly kept will cause thy triumph on the lofty seat. Then Francis came for me when I was dead, but one of our black cherubs said to him, Remove him not, and do no wrong to me. Among my menials he must needs descend, because he gave the fraudulent advice since which till now I've had him by the hair. For who repents not cannot be absolved, nor yet can one at once repent and will, the contradiction not permitting it. Oh, woe for me! Oh, how I shook with fear when after laying hold on me he said, Bamp, thou didst not think me a logician. He carried me to Minos, and the latter rammed his hard back eight times and twined his tail, and when in great rage he had bitten it, a sinner 
of the thievish fire is this he said hence where thou seest me i am lost and thus robed sorrowing go my way when he had thus completed his discourse the flame departed from us with its grief twisting and lashing its sharp pointed horn i and my leader then passed farther on up o'er the crag as far as the next arch which spans the ditch wherein their due is paid to those who burdens whim by severing bonds inferno twenty eight the eighth circle fraud the ninth trench sowers of discord whoever could even with unfettered words tell fully of the blood and of the wounds which now i saw though oft he told the tale all tongues would certainly fall short of it by reason of our speech and of our mind whose means are small for taking in so much if all the people should again assemble who on apulia's fortune ravaged soil suffered of old from all the loss of blood shed by the trojans and in that long war which with its spoil of rings made such high heaps as livy writes who maketh no mistakes with those who felt the painful force of blows received in waging war with robert guiscard and those whose bones are still heaped up together at keparano where a faithless liar was each apulium and near tagliacozzo were old alado won though all unarmed and if of these one showed a limb pierced through and one a limb lopped up twould all be nothing compared with this ninth trencher's foul display no cask indeed by loss of middle board or stave is opened as was one i saw split from the chin to where one breaketh wind while down between his legs his entrails hung his pluck appeared and that disgusting sack which maketh excrement of what is swallowed while i on seeing him was all intent he looked at me and opening with his hands his breast he said see how i am cloven behold i torn apart mahomet his ali in tears moves on ahead of me cloven in his face from forelock down to chim and all the others whom thou seest here disseminators were when still alive of strife and schism and hence a cloven thus there is a devil here behind who thus fiercely adorns and to the sword's edge puts each member of this company anew when we have gone around the woeful road because her one return in front of him the wounds thus made have all been closed again but who art thou that musest on the crag perhaps to put up going to the torture adjudge thine accusation of thyself death hath not reached him yet replied my teacher nor to a torment is he led by guilt but that complete experience may be given him i who am dead must needs conduct him here from circle unto circle down through hell and this is true as that i speak to thee on hearing him more were there than a hundred who stopped there in the ditch to look at me and who through their surprise forgot their pain to fra dogtino do thou therefore say thou that perhaps wilt shortly see the sun if soon he would not hither follow me to arm him so with food lest stress of snow should give the novaries a victory which else would not be easily obtained when one foot he had raised to go away mahomet said these words to me 
which done upon the ground he stretched it to depart another then who had his neck pierced through his nose cut off as far as neath his brows and who had one ear only having stopped to gaze in wonder with the others there opened before the rest his throat whose neck vermilion was on every side and said o oh, thou that by thy guilt art not condemned and whom up in the latin land i've seen unless too great resemblance play me forth call pierre de medicina to thy mind if e'er thou see again the lovely flame which from vercelli slopes to marcabo and make it known to fano's two best men to Merso guido and angiolello too that they unless foreseeing be in vain down here will from their vessel be cast forth and drowned in sacks near la catolica through a disloyal tyrant's treachery beneath the isles madolica and cyprus neptune ne'er saw so great a crime committed by pirates nay nor by the agolic folk that traitor who sees only with one eye and holds the town from seeing which one now is with me here who fain would fasting be will to a conference have them come with him he'll then so act that gainst for chaco's wind they'll stand in need of neither vow nor prayer and i to him point out and show to me if news of thee thou'dst have me bear above which is the one who hath the bitter sight thereat he laid his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions hoped his mouth and cried this is the one for he speaks not when exiled he removed all doubt in caesar by saying that a man when once prepared ne'er brook delay but to his detriment oh how dismayed that curio seemed to me who from his throat now had his tongue cut out yet once had been so daring in his speech then one from whom both hands had been lopped off raising his maimed arms through the gloomy air so that his blood befouled his face cried out mosca will thou remember too who said alas what's done is done a speech which proved the seed of evil for the tuscan race and death i thereto added to thy tribe then he as woe on woe he heaped went off as one would whom his grief had made insane but i remained to look upon the throng and such a thing i saw as i should be afraid to tell of without further proof if it were not that conscience reassures me the good companion which beneath the breastplate of conscious purity emboldens man i really saw and still i seem to see it a trunk without a head which moved along as moved the others of the mournful herd and by the hair it held the severed head which hanging like a lantern from its hand was saying as it gazed at us oh me with his own self he made himself a lamp and two in one they were and one in two how this can be he knows who so ordains when at the bridge's very foot he was he raised his arm above him head and all that he might thus bring near to us his words which were now see my baneful punishment thou that though breathing goest to see the dead see whether any be as great as this and that thou with thee mayest bear news of me now that bertrand born i am the man who gave the youthful king the ill support of sire and son our mutual rebels made 
Ahitophel by Absalom and David with his malicious goadings did no more. Because I served those who thus were joined, I bear my brain around with me, alas, severed from its foundation in this trunk. Retaliation thus is seen in me. End of chapter 52chapter fifty three of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison inferno twenty nine the eighth circle fraud the tenth trench falsifiers of metals the many people and unheard-of wounds had caused my eyes to be so drunk with tears that fain they were to linger there and weep but virgil said at what art gazing still why is it that thine eyes still rest down there among the wretched mutilated shades thou didst not thus when in the other trenches consider them if thou propose to count them that this trench circles two and twenty miles and that the moon is now beneath our feet short is the time allowed us still and more there is to see than what thou seest here if thou hadst heeded i thereat replied the reason for my gazing there thou wouldst perhaps have granted me a longer stay meantime my leader on his way was going and i behind him moving as i made my answer adding in that hollow place whereon i kept mine eyes so steadily i think a spirit sprang from mine own blood bewails the fault so dearly paid for there thereat my teacher said let not thy thoughts hereafter break on him heed other things and there let him remain for at the foot of that small bridge i saw him point thee out and with his finger fiercely threatened thee jerry del bello i then heard him called so holy wast thou then intent on him who formerly possessed hot fought that thou till he departed didst not look beyond leader said i his death by violence which is not yet avenged for him by any who shared the shame made him indignant that as i believe was why he went away without addressing me he thus has caused me to pity him the more we thus converse till we had reached the first place on the crag whence had there been more light the next ravine had to its very bottom been revealed when we o oh, malebolge's final cloister was situated so that its lay brethren could be perceived by us uncouth laments which had their arrow-heads with pity barbed so pierced me through and through that with my hands i closed mine ears such pain as there would be if from the hospitals of valdiciana marema and sardinia from july until september all diseases came together in one ditch such was it here and out of it there came a stench like that which out of rotting limbs is wont to come adown the last bank of the lengthy crag we went as ever to the left and then much clearer was my vision toward the bottom wherein the servant of the most high lord justice infallible is punishing the falsifiers she recordeth here i do not think it were a sadder sight 
to see the whole race in Aegina sick, when so suffused with poison was the air, that all the animals, down to the little worm, fell dead, and when the ancient race of people, according to what poets hold for truth, out of the seed of ants restored themselves, then now it was to see the spirits languish down in that gloomy ditch in different heaps. One on his belly lay, and others leaned against each other's shoulders, while another crawled on all fours along the dismal path. Without conversing, step by step we moved, both looking at and listening to the sick, who could not raise their bodies. Two of these I then saw sitting, and against each other leaning, just as a pan against a pan is leaned to warm, and spotted o'er with scabs from head to foot. And never have I seen a curry comb plied by a boy for whom his master waited, or by one who kept awake against his will, as each of plied upon himself the edge of fingernails, for the great rage of itching which hath else no help. Their nails kept scraping down their scabs, as doth a knife the scales of bream, or fish of other kinds, equipped with larger scales. O oh, thou, that with thy fingers flayest thyself, to one of them, my leader then began, and who at times dost pincers make of them? Pray, tell us, where the Latin any be of these in here? So may thy nails suffice thee for thy work eternally. We, both of us, whom thou beholdest here so spoiled, are Latin, answered one who wept. But who art thou that didst inquire of us? My leader thereupon said, I am one who with this living man from ledge to ledge descend, and do propose to show him hell. Thereat the common back was broken up, and trembling each of them turned round toward me, with others who had heard him by rebound. Then my good teacher drew close up to me and said, Say whatsoe'er thou wilt to them. Hence, since he so had wished it, I began. So may your memory never fly away from human minds in that first world of ours, but rather under many suns survive. Pray tell me who ye are, and of what people, nor let your foul and loathsome punishment make you afraid to show yourselves to me. I of Arezzo was, and Alberto da Siena had me burned. One then replied, But what I died for doth not bring me here. Tis true, I said to him, although in jest, that I knew how to raise me in the air, and he who curious, had but little sense, wished me to show that art to him, and only because I did not make him Daedalus. He had me burned by one who treated him as son. But to the last trench of the ten, Minos, who may not make mistakes, condemned me for the alchemy I practised in the world. Then to the poet I now was there ever a people as vainglorious as the men of Siena, surely not the French by far. Whereat the other leprous one who heard me replied to what I said, Excepting Streaker, whom moderation knew in what he spent, and Niccolo, who was the first to find the costly use of cloves in gardens where such seed takes root, excepting, too, the company 
on whom Kachir de Ashian wasted his vineyard and great forest land, while Dabagliato squandered all his scents. But so that thou mayst know who backs thee thus against the men of Siena, point thine eyes toward me, that well my face may answer thee, so shalt thou see that I'm Capuccio's shades, who metals falsified by alchemy, and thou, if well I see thee, shouldst recall how good an ape of nature I was once. Inferno 30, the eighth circle, fraud, the tenth trench falsifiers of persons money and words when juno on account of semele was angry with the royal blood of thebes as several times she showed herself to be so fiercely mad did athamas become that when he saw his wife approaching him burdened by her two sons on either side spread we the nets he cried that i may take upon their passing lioness and cubs and thereupon stretched out his cruel claws and taking hold of one learchus named whirled him around and dashed him against a rock his wife then with the other drowned herself again when fortune so low down had brought the trojans arrogant all daring power that with their kingdom shattered was their king hecuba sad forlorn and captive now when she had seen her dead polyxena and in her painful anguish had perceived her polydorus lying on the beach out of her senses barked as would a dog so greatly had her suffering turned her mind but ne'er did furies or of thebes or troy reveal in any one such cruelty in goading beasts or much less human limbs as that which i beheld in two death-pale and naked shades who ran around and bit as doth a boar when from the sty let out one reached capuccio and so thrust his tusks into his neck behind that dragging him he made his belly scrape the solid ground the aretine still trembling said to me that imp is gianni she cheats who enraged goes all around ill-treating others thus then oh said i to him so may the other not fix his teeth in thee be not too tired to tell me who he is before he skips and he to me that is the ancient soul of wicked Mera, who, outside the bounds of lawful love, became her father's mistress. She came to sin with him by counterfeiting another's person in herself, as dared the other one who yonder goes away, that he might gain the lady of the stud, to counterfeit Buoso Donati's self, and make his will and give it legal form when the two furious souls on whom my eyes were fixed had passed away i turned them round to look upon the other evil-born and one i saw who like a lute were shaped if he had only had his groin cut off down in the region where a man is forked the heavy dropsy which unmates the limbs in such a way with ill-digested humour that face and paunch no longer correspond was causing him to keep his lips apart as doth the hectic who because of thirst 
turns one lip chinward and the other up oh ye that are and wherefore i know not free from all torment in this world of woe said he to us behold and pay attention to master adam's wretched misery when living i had all that i desired and now alas i crave a drop of water the little brooks which toward the arno run down from the casentino's green-clad hills and render all their channels cool and fresh are ever more before me nor in vain because their image makes me drier far than this disease which strips my face of flesh the rigid justice which is scourging me takes from the very place in which i send the means to give my sighs a greater flight there lies ramina where i falsified the coin on which the baptist form is stamped for that i left my body burned above but could i seek the woeful soul of guido or alexander or their brother here for fonte branda i'd not give the sight one is in here already if the shades who go around here raging tell the truth but what is that to me his limbs are bound if only i were still so light of foot that i could in a hundred years advance one inch i'd be already on the road in search of him among the loathsome people although this trench goes round eleven miles and is no less than half a mile across through them am i in such a family for they persuaded me to coin the florins which had at least three carats of alloy. Then I to him said, Who are these two wretches, who, smoking like wet hands in winter time, are lying there beside thee on thy right? I found them here, he answered, when I reigned into this ditch, since when they have not turned, nor will, I think, for all eternity one is the woman who charged joseph falsely the other sinon troy's deceitful greek the burning fever makes them reek like this and one of them who felt aggrieved perhaps at being named so darkly smote the speaker upon his hard stiff belly with his fist it made a sound as it had been a drum then master adam smote him with his arm which did not seem less hard upon his face and said thou i of motion be deprived by reason of my limbs which heavy are i have an arm that's loose for needs like this then he replied when going to the fire thou hadst it not so ready but just so and more thou hadst it when thou madest coin he of the dropsy here thou sayest true but thou wast not so true a witness there when thou wast questioned of the truth to troy if i spoke falsely Thou didst falsify the coin, said Sinon. I'm for one sin here, and thou for more than any other demon. Remember, perjurer the horse, replied he of the swollen paunch, and bitter be for thee that known it is by all the world. Ill be for thee the thirst wherewith thy tongue is cracking said the greek and that foul water which for thine eyes thus makes thy paunch a hedge thereat the coiner said as is its wont thy mouth in speaking evil gapeth wide for though i'm thirsty and humour stuffs me out thine is the fever and the aching head 
and thou'dst not stand in need of many words bidding thee lick the mirror of narcissus on listening to them i was all intent when now be careful there my teacher said for i'm not far from quarrelling with thee when i thus heard him speak to me in anger such was the shame wherewith i turned to him that through my memory it is circling still and such is he who dreameth of his harm and dreaming wishes that he dreamt and thus as if it were not longs for that which is such i became who impotent to speak would fain excuse myself and all the while was doing so but did not think i was less shame would wash away a greater fault than thine hath been my teacher said to me therefore unburden thee of all thy sadness and count on me as ever at thy side if it again should chance that fortune find thee where folk in such a wrangle are engaged for vulgar is the wish to hear such things inferno thirty one the edge of the central well the giants one and the self-same tongue first wounded me so that it coloured both my cheeks and then supplied me with the medicine required achilles and his father's lance i hear was likewise wont to be the source of first a sad and after of a grateful gift we turned our backs upon the woeful veil over the bank which girds it round about and passed across without a single word here less than night it was and less than day so that my sight advanced not far but here i heard a horn give forth so loud a sound that it had rendered any thunder faint this led mine eyes as counter to its path they followed wholly to a single place after the woeful rout when charlemagne the holy army of his knights had lost roland blew not so terrible a blast i had not kept my head turned toward it long when many lofty towers i seemed to see i therefore teacher say what town is this since through the darkness from too far away thou peerest he replied it comes about that afterward thou errest in conceiving if yonder thou were tame thou'lt clearly see how from afar one senses are deceived hence onward urge thyself a little more thereat he took my hand with kindly care and said to me ere further on we go so that the fact may seem less strange to thee know them that towers they are not but giants and all of them are standing in the well around the bank each from his navel down as when a fog is thinning up one's gaze little by little giveth shape to that which since it packs the air the mist conceals even so as through the dense dark air i pierced and nearer drew and nearer to the brink error in me took flight and fear increased for as upon its round enclosing walls monterey gilne crowns itself with towers thus o'er the margin which surrounds the well with one half of their bodies towered up those frightful giants whom when from the sky he thunders jupiter is threatening still already now was i distinguishing the face of one his shoulders and his breast most of his paunch and down his sides both arms 
when nature ceased from making animals like these and took such executioners from mars she certainly did very well and even if she of elephants and whales repent her not whoever subtly looks holds her therein the more discreet and just for where the reasoning faculty is joined to evil will equipped with power to act people can make against it no defence his face appeared to me as long and big as is at rome the pine cone of st peter's and in proportion to it were his other bones so that the bank which from his middle down an apron was showed quite so much of him above it that of reaching to his hair three frisians would have made a useless boast for i full thirty spans of him perceived down from the place at which one buckles cloaks Rappo, my amexabi et almi the frightful mouth to which no sweeter psalms were fitting thereupon began to cry then toward him cried my leader foolish soul keep to thy horn and vent thyself therewith when wrath or other passion seizes thee search at thy neck and thou wilt find the cord which holds it tied o spirit of confusion and see it lying on thy mighty breast to me then self-accused he stands for this is nimrod to whose evil thought is due that more than one tongue in the world is spoken let us leave him alone nor talk in vain for such is every tongue to him as his to others is for that is known to none then turning to the left we travelled on much further and within a crossbow shot we found the next one far more large and fierce what was the master's power who girded him i cannot say but this one had in front his left arm and behind his back his right tied by a chain which downward from his neck held him so bound that on the uncovered part it wound around as far as the fifth coil my leader said to me gains job most high this proud soul wished to test his strength and hence hath this reward ephialtes is his name his haughty undertaking he attempted what time the giants caused the gods to fear the arms he plied he moveth now no more and i to him if possible it be i gladly have these eyes of mine and joy experience of the measureless Briaria. then he replied and Taeus thou behold not far from here who speaks and since unbound can set us at the bottom of all sin he is much further on whom thou wouldst see and bound he is and shaped like this one save that more ferocious in his looks he seems there never was an earthquake strong enough to shake a tower with so much violence as epialtes quickly shook at this then more than ever yet did i fear death nor for it was the need of more than fear had it not been that i perceived his bonds we thereupon proceeded further still and to antaeus came who full five owls beside his head protruded from the pit o thou that in the valley fortune blessed which once caused scipio to inherit glory when with his followers hannibal to flight once took a thousand lions as thy prey and who hadst thou been at thy brethren's war on high it seems that it is still believed the sons of earth had been the victors there pray set us down below nor let disdain affect thee where the cold locks up cocytus 
make us not go to Titius or to Tiphius. This man can give what most is longed for here. Stoop then, nor twist thy muzzle. He can still give fame to thee on earth, since he is living, and still looks forward to long life, if grace recall him not untimely to itself. The teacher thus. Then he in haste stretched out the hands, whose mighty pressure Hercules once felt, and took my leader. Virgil then, on feeling himself taken, said to me, Come here, that I may take thee up. And then so did, that he and I one bundle were. Such as the carisender seems, when viewed beneath its leaning side, when e'er a cloud sails o'er its soul that opposite it hangs, such did Antaeus seem to me, who watched to see him stoop, and such a moment twas that I had gladly gone another road. But lightly at the bottom, which devours Judas and Lucifer, he set us down, nor thus bent over did he linger there, but raised himself as on a ship, a mast. End of chapter 53Chapter 54 of Jerusalem to Revelations, A Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Inferno 32 The Ninth Circle treachery, coquitus, traitors to their relatives and to their country. If I had rhymes that were as harsh and hoarse as would be fitting for the dismal hole on which lean all the other circling rocks, I'd squeeze the juice of my conception out more fully, but because I have them not, not without fear do I resolve to speak, for to describe the bottom of the universe is not an enterprise wherewith to jest, nor for a tongue that says Mama and Dad. Let them, those ladies, give my verse their aid, who helped Amphion build the walls of Thebes, that from the fact the telling differ not. O oh, rabble, that ill-born beyond all people, are in a place to speak of which is hard. Far better had ye here been sheep or goats. When we were down within the gloomy well, beneath the giant's feet, though lower far, and I still gazing at its lofty wall, I heard one say to me, Look where thou walkest, and see that with thy feet thou trample not the heads of us, two wretched, weary brothers. Thereat I turned around, and saw before me, and neath my feet, a lake which, being frozen, seemed to be made of glass and not of water. The Danube, up in Austria, never made so thick a veil in winter for its course, nor yonder, neath the cold sky, did the dom, as what was here. For even if Tambanic had fallen on it, or had Pietropana, it had not cracked, even at its very edge. And as a frog remains, to do its croaking with muzzle out of water in the season when off the peasant dreams that she is gleaning even so 
as far as where one's shame is shown the woeful shades were livid in the ice as to the notes of stalks they set their teeth each kept his face turned downward from his mouth the cold and from his eyes his saddened heart provides itself a witness in their midst when i had gazed around a while i looked down at my feet and two i saw with heads so close together that their hair was mixed ye that are pressing thus your breasts together say who ye are said i they bent their necks and when their faces had been raised toward me their eyes moist only inwardly before gushed upward through the lids whereat the cold binding the tears between them closed them up a clamp ne'er bound so tightly board to board whereat so great the anger mastering them like two he-goats they butted one another and one who had by reason of the cold lost both his ears with face still lowered said why dost thou mirror thee so much on us if thou wouldst know who those two near thee are the valley from which thy bisentio flows belonged to their sire albert and to them they issued from one body and thou canst search through all kinder but thou'lt never find a shade more worthy to be fixed in ice not he whose breast and shadow broken were by one same blow at arthur's hand nor yet Focaccia, nor this fellow here whose head so blocks me that i cannot see beyond and who was sasso masharoni called who he was thou if tuscan thou knowest well and that thou put me to no further speech know then that i was Camichium de patsy and that to excuse me i await carlin thereafter i beheld a thousand faces made dog-like by the cold hence frozen ponds cause me to shudder now and always will and now while toward that centre we were moving where two all heavy objects gravitate and i was trembling in the eternal cold i know not whether it were will or fate or chance but as i walked among the heads hard in the face of one i struck my foot weeping he scolded wherefore dost thou smite me unless thou comest to increase the vengeance for month of petty why dost thou molest me and i said teacher wait now for me here that i through him may issue from a doubt then at thy pleasure shalt thou hurry me my leader stopped and i to him who still was savagely blaspheming said what sort of man art thou that scoldest people so now who art thou that goest he replied through antonora smiting cheeks so roughly that it would be too much wert thou alive i am alive and it may profit thee was my reply for me to place thy name if fame thou ask among my other notes and he i crave the country away with thee and bother me no more for ill dost thou know how to flatter in this bog thereat i seized him by the nape and said it needs must be that thou reveal thy name or that no hair remain upon thee here then he to me don't thou pull up my hair and neither say nor show thee who i am for thou upon my head a thousand times i had his hair wrapped round my hand already and more than one shock had i plucked from him while he was barking with his eyes turned down when here another cried what ails thee Bocca? is making noise with jawbones not enough unless thou bark what 
devil touches thee henceforth said i i would not have thee speak perfidious traitor for true news of thee i'll carry with me to thy lasting shame begone and tell whate'er thou wilt he answered but be not silent if thou issue hence of him who had just now his tongue so ready he here bewails the money of the french him of duera thou canst say i saw where cold the days are for the sinful folk and if thou shouldst be asked who else was there thou hast beside thee him of beccaria who had his gorget cut in two by florence gianni de saldanier is further on i think with ganelon and tebaldello who while its people slept on lot Fienza. from him we had departed now when two i saw so frozen in a single hole that one man's head served as the other's cap and as because of hunger bread is eaten even so the upper on the other set his teeth where to the nape the brain is joined not otherwise did tidius nor the temples of menelippus out of spite then this one was gnawing at the skull and other parts. O thou that showest by a sign so beastly hatred toward him thou eatest, tell me why, said I to him, on this express condition, that shouldst thou rightfully of him complain, I knowing who ye are and that one sim, may quit thee for it in the world above, if that wherewith I speak be not dried up. Inferno 33 The Ninth Circle Treachery Cocytus Traitors to their country and to their guests From his grim meal that sinner raised his mouth and wiped it on the hair of that same head which he had spoiled behind. He then began, Thou wouldst that I renew a hopeless grief, the thought of which already breaks my heart, before I speak of it. But if my words are likely to be seeds, and bear the fruit of infamy upon the traitor whom I gnaw, speaking and weeping, shalt thou see together. I know not who thou art, nor by what means thou art come down here. But when I hear thee speak, that truly seems to me a Florentine. Know then that I count Ugolino was, and this man here of Gieri, the archbishop. And now I'll tell thee why I'm thus his neighbour. That, as the outcome of his evil thought, I, trusting him, was seized, and afterward was put to death, there is no need to say. But that which thou canst not have heard, that is, how cruel was my death, thou now shalt hear, and whether he have wronged me, thou shalt know. A narrow slit within the molting tower, which bears because of me the name of hunger, and in whose walls still others must be locked, had through its opening shown me many a moon already, when I had the evil dream which rent apart the curtain of the future. This one therein a lord and huntsman seemed, chasing the wolf and wolfings toward the mount, which hinders peasants from beholding Luca, with bitches lean and eager and well-trained, for he had set before him in his bam Gualandi with Sismondi and Lanfranchi. After a little rum, both father and sons seemed weary to me. Then, methought, I saw their flanks torn open by sharp-pointed fangs. When, just before the morning, I awoke, I heard my children, who were with me there, sob in their sleep, and ask me for their bread. Cruel indeed thou art, if thinking what my heart forebode, thou grievest not already. And if thou weepest not, 
at what art wont to weep awake they were and now the hour was drawing nigh when food was brought to us hence each by reason of his dream was worried and then i heard the dread towers lower door nailed up whereat without a word i looked my children in the face i did not weep so like a stone had i become with him they wept and my poor little anselm said father thou lookest so what aileth thee but still i did not weep nor did i answer through all that day or through the following night till on the world another sun had dawned then when a little beam had made its way into our woeful prison and i perceived by their four faces how i looked myself i bit in anguish both my hands and they thinking it done because i craved to eat immediately stood up and said to me father much less shall we be pained if us thou eat thou with this wretched flesh didst clothe us do thou then strip it from us now thereat to sadden them no more i calmed myself through that day and the next we all kept mute i calmed myself through that day and the next we all kept mute ah oh, why hard earth didst thou not open up then gado when the fourth day we had reached stretched himself out at length before my feet and said my father why dost thou not help me and there he died and even as thou seest me between the fifth day and the sixth i saw the three fall one by one and blind already i gave myself to groping over each and two days called them after they were dead then fasting proved more powerful than pain when he had spoken thus with eyes awry he seized again the wretched skull with teeth which for the bone were strong as are a dog's ah pisa foul reproach of those that dwell in that fair country where the sea is heard since slow thy neighbours are to punish thee then let caprara and gorgona move and make a hedge across the arno's mouth that every person in thee may be drowned for though count ugolino hath the name of traitor to thee in thy castle towns thou shouldst not thus have crucified his sons their youthful age had made the modern thebes Brigata and Ugiccione innocent, and the other two my canto names above. Further along we went, to where the ice roughly enswathes another class of people, not downward turned, but wholly on their backs. Weeping itself allows not weeping there, and tears which find a barrier in their eyes turn back to cause their suffering to increase because the first ones form a solid block and thus like crystal visors wholly fill the hollow cup beneath the brow and though as in a callous spot because of cold all feeling had departed from my face it seemed to me that now i felt some wind whence i to him my teacher who moves this is not all moving air quenched here below and he ere long shalt thou be where thine eyes seeing the cause which raineth down the blast will make an answer to thee as to this one of the wretches of the icy crust called out to us thereat o oh, soul so cruel that unto you the last place is assigned remove for me the hard veils on my face that i may somewhat vent the pain that fills my heart before the tears freeze up again when i to him if thou wouldst have me help thee say who thou art and should i not relieve thee may i needs reach the bottom of the ice then he i frate alberigo am he of the evil garden's fruit 
who here for every fig I gave get back a day. Then, oh, said I, art thou already dead? And he to me replied, I have no knowledge how in the world above my body fares. Such is the privilege of this Ptolemaeus, that frequently a soul falls into it, ere Atropos have caused it to move on. But that thou scrape more gladly from my face these glassy tears, know then that just as soon as any soul betrays as I betrayed, its body is taken from it by a demon, who then takes charge of it, until its time be all revolved into a well like this it rushes headlong down and so perhaps the body of the shade that wanders here behind me is still visible above this thou shouldst know if just come down for he sabranka d'aria is and many years have now gone by since he was thus shut up i think said i that thou deceivest me for branca d'aria is not dead as yet but eats and drinks and sleeps and dons his clothes above us in the mallet branches ditch he said there where the sticky pitch is boiling not yet had michael zencher's soul arrived when in his stead this fellow left behind a devil in his body as did also one of his kinsmen who with him performed the treachery but stretch thy hand here now and ope thine eyes and yet i ope them not for rudeness shown to him was courtesy ah genoese ye men estranged from all morality and full of every vice why from the earth are ye not wholly driven for with the meanest spirit of romana i found one such of you that for his deeds in soul he bathes already in coquitus and seems in body still alive above inferno thirty four the ninth circle treachery coquitus traitors to their benefactors lucifer the banners of the king of hell advance towards us now therefore look ahead of thee my teacher said and see if thou perceive him as when a heavy fog is breathed abroad or when at night a hemisphere grows dark a windmill looks when seen from far away even such a structure seemed i now to see then for the wind i shrank behind my leader for other shelter was there none I now, and tis with fear I put it into verse, was where the shades were wholly covered up, and visible as is a straw in glass. Some lying are, and some are standing up, one on his head, the other on his soles, one like a bow, bends toward his feet his face. When we had gone so far ahead, that now it pleased my teacher to reveal to me the creature who once seemed so beautiful he stepped from where he was in front of me stopped me and said lo dis and lo the place where thou must arm thyself with fortitude how frozen and how weak i then became hast thou not reader for i write it not because all speech would be of small avail i did not die nor yet remained alive Think for thyself now, hast thou any wit, what I became of both of these deprived? The emperor of the realm of woe stood forth out of the ice from midway up his breast, and I compare more closely with a giant than merely with his arms the giants do. Consider now how great that hole must be, that with such parts as these may be compared. If once as beautiful as ugly now, he still raised up his brows against his maker, justly doth every woe proceed from him. Oh, what a marvel it appeared to me when I beheld three faces to his head. 
one was in front of us and that was red the other two were to the latter joined right or the middle of each shoulder blade and met each other where he had his crest that on the right twixt white and yellow seemed the left one such to look at as are those who come from there where veilward flows the nile under each face two mighty wings stretched out of size proportioned to so huge a bird sails of the sea i never saw so large they had no feathers but were like a bat's in fashion these he flapped in such a way that three winds issued forth from him thereby coquitus was completely frozen up with six eyes he was weeping and his tears and bloody slaver trickled o'er three chins in each mouth as a heckle would have done a sinner he was crushing with his teeth and thus was causing pain to three of them to him who was in front of us the biting was nothing to the clawing for at times his back remained completely stripped of skin that soul up there which hath the greatest pain judas iscariot is my teacher said who hath his head with him and plies his legs without of the other two whose heads are down brutus is he who from the black snout hangs see how he writhes and utters not a word cassius the other is who so big-limbed appears but night is coming up again and now tis time to leave for we've seen all then as it pleased him i embraced his neck and he availed himself of time and place and when the wings were opened wide enough he firmly grasped the shaggy flanks and then from tuft to tuft he afterward descended between the matted hair and frozen crusts when we were come to where the thigh turns round just at the thick part of the hips my leader with tiring effort and with stress of breath turned his head round to where his legs had been and seized the hair as one would who ascends hence i thought we were going back to hell hold fast to me for by such stairs as these panting like one worn out my teacher said must such great wickedness be left behind then through an opening in the rock he issued and after setting me upon its edge over toward me advanced his cautious step raising mine eyes i thought that i should still see lucifer the same as when i left him but i beheld him with his legs held up and thereupon if i became perplexed let those dull people think who do not see what kind of point that was which i had passed stand up my teacher said upon thy feet the way is long and difficult the road and now to middle tierce the sun returns it was no palace hallway where we were but just a natural passage underground which had a wretched floor and lack of light before i turn myself from this abyss teacher said i on rising talk to me a little and correct my wrong ideas where is the ice and how is this one fixed thus upside down and in so short a time how hath the sun from evening crossed to morn then he to me thou thinkest thou art still beyond the centre where i seize the hair of that bad worm who perforates the world while i was going down thou wast beyond it but when i turned thou then didst pass the point to which all weights are drawn on every side thou now art come beneath the hemisphere opposed to that the great dry land o'er covers and neath whose zenith was destroyed the man who without sinfulness was born and died thy feet thou hast upon the little sphere which forms the other surface of judecca tis morning here whenever evening there and he who made our ladder with his hair is still fixed fast even as he was before he fell on this side out of heaven whereat the land 
which hitherto were spread out here, through fear of him, made of the sea avail, and came into our hemisphere, perhaps to flee from him. What is on this side seen left the place empty here, and upward rushed. There is a place down there, as far removed from Beelzebub, as e'er his tomb extends, not known by sight, but by a brooklet's sound, which flows down through a hole there in the rock, gnawed in it by the water's spiral course which slightly slopes. My leader then and I, in order to regain the world of light, entered upon that dark and hidden path, and without caring for repose went up, he going on ahead, and I behind, till through a rounded opening I beheld some of the lovely things the sky contained. Thence we came out, and saw again the stars. End of chapter 54 End of Inferno